It's the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. More Bassmaster Live, second three hours. The second part of our day starts right here, right now, second event of the season here, the Bassmaster Elite Series. DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, and Bill Lowen, who started the day with the lead, is back on top. Chad Pipkins had risen from 10th place into second place. And when we left you, a lot has happened since then, though. We'll fill you in on as much of that as we can. Jamie Hartman off to a big start today. Jake Whitaker in the top 10, out back in again in a big way. Kyle Welcher on what he called a train wreck day. I'd hate to see what happens when he gets on track here. Having a pretty good day number two out here, and that's the way it started for us this morning. Chris Aldane. Exactly right. A lot of fish catches this morning, but really going back, actually rewinding to that leaderboard, what a shift in just 60 minutes of our intermission. Uh, we repopulated the top 10 in, in large part. And what's interesting is we're going to kind of break that down. Ron Moore, Such, we're talking about it during break. Something transpires on this lake. And it's a lot about that guy and others that are fishing shallow. They start biting shallow midday. A lot of times you see some good early bites shallow. They start biting midday on this lake up shallow in that water willow. I want to hear your opinion on why that is. Davy Heights oh, as well. Yes. Now we're cooking, baby. Ronnie, everybody probably put their mind, give it a think a little for a few minutes and yeah. see what we can come up with. You know, this morning it, it was really interesting to watch how a lot of guys managed their areas. A lot of our offshore guys are only fishing one or two spots. Some of them fishing multiple areas. And actually, during our break, this is from Jamie Hartman moments ago. Hartman with a good start I this gotta morning. I got to go find something to do and then come back to this. There we go. That's gonna help the cause. I think, yeah, that definitely should. Finicky, dude. Very, very, very finicky. Super light bite. Golly. I got him good, he wasn't coming off, that's for sure. Jamie Hartman started 13 pounds in the first hour and a half and then kind of just slowly, slowly upgrading. Now he's up to about 15 pounds. Jamie Hartman back in the top five and third position right now. Todd Auten with the number six start today, started in sixth place. And this was just moments ago. Must felt like I had a little one. Here's Get right here at the boat. It's not that big, but. Oh, whoa, 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 come here. He's a bow back. He'll help a little bit. Look at that thing. Hulk's back. Will. Todd Auden with 21 and a half pounds yes, uh, yesterday, up to about 14 today. Head over to Bill Lowen, and this is actually during our intermission. Bill Lowen with a very, very slow morning, your day one leader. Starting to question what he was doing a little bit, changed up. This was while we were at break. Oh, look at that big old Nancy. Yeah, baby. <laughs> ah, nice little adjustment. Went to a dock. Boom. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's a big one. Big, big, big one. <sighs> All right, so. Easy, kids, easy. 
snake's number five. Boy, when he started fighting, I thought it was a catfish because he was rolling. Let me get in here real quick. Got one in there. Yes, sir. I got a little tiny peanut in here somewhere unless he went out the drain. Now that is what I'm talking about. All right. That's a big one. That is a big one. Oh, I so needed that. So needed that. Now I just need three more of them big old suckers. These docks up through here got a little bit of brush on them. Probably like every dock on Lake Eufaula. And uh, that's exactly what that fish was in, was a little tiny brush pile. See if we can get another. Went to a uh, little smaller profile jig, a 3 8 with a old school Strike King chunk on it. If anybody's got any of those out there and they want to get rid of them, I'd love to have them. Green pumpkin or black and blue. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can get another. All right, Bill Lowen, uh, pleased with that. A little, yes. de little decision he made there, a little something different. So he's going to get his jig and get back in the water around those boat docks, a little, as he called it, a small brush pile there. Go to Clark Winlet, who was basically hogged all the airtime this morning because he was always, always hooked up. Exactly. One of the things we saw this morning, Clark Winlet was plagued with two and a half pound fish, had one big one in the live well, but this was during our break. He will help. Yes, sir. Movement. Just talked in him into biting out of a brush pile. Clark Winlet, who absolutely had him dialed in this morning. That was that was the total feeling you got from him, his attitude, everything, all the results, the outcomes he was getting. And, and like everyone else fishing deep, he, he, you have to expect that lull in the midday. And, and, but his lull was, I think, for like 15 minutes, and that was about it. He's definitely played the numbers game better than anybody that we've covered so far in this tournament. But, but interestingly enough, and we talked about this a little bit when we were off air, uh, a lot of the guys that really struggled shallow early in this tournament this morning, they started to chip away at some of the leaders during our break. Uh, and interesting, we, we talked about this earlier this morning, it just seems like this lake starts to to really set on fire after that midday break again. And, and the great news all the way around, we're seeing so many different techniques, so many different places, parts of the lake playing today, and that makes for a great show. Mark Zona here, Tommy Sanders, Bassmaster Studios. Also, Ronnie Moore, Ron Moore, and the Such Mike Sukon. Guys, what have you been watching? You watched a lot of what was going on during the break. That's one thing. Yesterday we watched and we saw literally the top five all switch from what they were the morning three hours, just in that midday lull for the offshore guys. It's kind of a weird dynamic. We'll get into it at the monitor in a little bit, but the fishing just seems to flip around at that 11 a.m. Eastern time mark. We had several big, I'm watching the, the 40 cut. We're up to about uh, 29 pounds here. We're thinking it's gonna get five more pounds of the afternoon of fishing. Some big fish came in, Destin Demarion with a six pounder. What's the, 40, what's the 40 cut gonna be? How many pounds do you have to be to be in the top 40 at the end of today? 32 to 33 maybe, yeah, double 30, 17 yeah. halfway. All right. Everybody's kind of saying that uh, top 40 only. We'll pass on to Saturday, to excuse me, Friday's day three competition. You know, all will be told come way in time and that happens starting around three o'clock Eastern time today. Kyle Monty started in second place behind Bill Lowen, who was right there to his left. <sighs> Might help. Okay, it's better than that other one, maybe.
half ounce lure parts online, Bill Lowe and Flippin' Jig. Don't give up on the jig, ain't that what I just said? Strike King trailer on it. Come on. Yep. Not by much. Buddy helps. Thank you, buddy. Don't give up on the jig, Bill. He had a one and a half pounder in there. That'd give him a couple ounces maybe, oh. but uh, top 10 only separated by a little more than two pounds. Good stuff, tight competition, just what we want. Lip. Bill, of course, made a plea. He'd like more of those trailers if anyone wants to send them. And he may have been talking to you, Mark. I, well, it's somebody already texted. <laughs> one of, one of our advertisers, Justin from Bass University, said, I'm sure you have some. I'm sure I do. Okay. I'm sure I so do. So it's your, it's in, balls in your court? I, like I said, I'm sure I do. <laughs> okay. Kind of just tuning in, one of the things that Bill Lowen, your day one leader, was looking for, he would look at his Lake Master mapping chip, and wherever, if you look at, he's fishing a lot of the main lake willow grass, and wherever there would be a depression that would compress against shore, a little bit deeper water, like if you're looking at that grass right there, if that deep water would cut in towards that grass, that's predominantly where all of his bigger bites would come. He said, don't get me wrong, I've caught a lot of them throughout different patches of grass, that but that was the work. biggest key. On the right there, one of the big uh, comebacks of the from the morning's uh, slowness is Jake Whitaker, who uh, really got things rolling around that uh, 11 to 12 hour. Just going to watch Jake in action here, see what he's up to. He's uh, can be often found around boat docks. He may be a little bit away from this one. Yeah, had a good start. First stop of the year, seems so long ago, back in February at the St. John's River in Florida. A lot of boat dock uh, catches there that paid off for him. That's a big one, just fishing canals <laughs> yeah, yeah. throughout this tournament. It was a really, really tough event. Not a usual tough event that you'd see on the St. John's with some real big bites from Jake Whitaker. Jake, former college, Carhartt College Bassmaster National Champion from uh, UNC Charlotte. He finished fifth there. He's fifth right here today. He is our Angler of the Year leader currently. Wow. Great season so far. Tommy, today he was, I, I will classify it as back from the grave. He had one two pounder this morning, yeah. and in a 33 minute stretch on Eufaula, he caught 13 pounds to 12 ounces of his weight, and that's why he has that 15 to 16 pound bag right now, uh, and, and he's in the top five. He had back fallen from the grave, out, 30 minutes. Out, he had fallen outside the cut. He was oh, in the he 40s. Was in, he, today. Was in, he was in like 56 at a certain point, probably. That's what you get all day. And so many guys frog fishing up shallow, but looking at those shade lines, well, oh, that has been so critical for a lot of our, well, some of our guys that have actually executed up shallow. All about the points, of course, as we go through the season, how many points you accumulate based on your finish in each and every tournament determines your qualification for the, uh, for the Bassmaster Classic, among other things. And Jake Whitaker start today in the top spot. Last scary year pursuer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary Hanover, pursuer. Winlick, Scott Hanover, Hanover, who uh, handily took that AOI yeah. trophy last time. And Clark Wendland certainly uh, looking even better now after his performance today. We'll be right back with Bassmaster. AOI. Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? No. 
nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bass University is all about. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. The DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Power Pole Skeeter Boats Yamaha and by Toyota The second day in a row, just all around great stuff. All day long here on one of the great fisheries in America. Lake Eufaula, Bill Lowen, who started the day. Yesterday knocked out 23 pounds at four ounces to lead, fell way down out of that lead, and now has put, put together a campaign during the last hour to put himself back on top. Now, this tournament was originally scheduled for early April. It would have been fantastic then. Yeah, it would have, would have been a spawning tournament, but I think it speaks even more about this uh, about this fishery that it's so good right now. And a man who has uh, hit this fishery with great, great results going all the way back to 1994 is Davey Hyde, working on his electronic, get, getting something ready to tell us here, I'm sure. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. Uh, you know, the shallow bite has picked up in the last uh, hour or so, so I'll be able to catch that big one, but I've been with Chad Pipkins during the break, and it's not a, near as many anglers fishing like Chad Pipkin. The typical way that you would see a lot of the fishermen fish Lake Eufaula in, in the month of June. But I'll show you real quick on my, on my Lake Master, there's, a, there's an angler right over here to my right, which is right here. You got the main river channel over here, you see in the dark blue, and then deep water to here, and that's a little small ditch. One of the anglers right over here. And then I'll just scroll right up a little farther. That's a very obvious place there. Chad's fishing less obvious stuff like this right here. It's a ditch, doesn't have a sharp contour so it doesn't show up. You gotta have the latest Lake Master mapping. This is the stuff that Chad Pipkin's fishing. It's a little off the beaten path, so to speak, and he, he's done real well yesterday and today. And it's, he's just graphing around, trying to mark those fish and fishing these places that are not so obvious. You see the difference here? Obviously, uh, there is a creek channel there, but you gotta look in close and you back up right here. These are the places that get pounded. And there's been a lot of pressure here on this lake. There always is, but just in the last few weeks, definitely been a lot of pressure. These type places, those fish are, if they're there and you do mark them, they're very, very hard to get to bite. Davey, kind of walk us through what happens. For somebody that doesn't watch the Bassmaster Elite Series, when they start generating water, when they start moving current, generally this time of day, right around one o'clock, how how it positions those fish underwater to where they're grouped up a lot more instead of one here and one there? Great, great question, Z. So there's there's two different things that are, that are going on offshore. You got guys like Clark and even Drew Benton. They're not fishing as deep as a Chad Pipkins, a Gary Klaus. I was with him yesterday. He's fishing deeper than a lot of these guys. So the guys that are shallow, when they start moving that water, those fish want to pull up to some type of cover. They, they get active and they want to feed. So 
it'll help the brush piles because those fish that some of them are, are roaming obviously some of them are already in the brush pile this morning we've seen them guys catch a lot of fish but it'll gravitate those fish to cover when that water's moving they'll get behind a, a piece of brush behind a rock something like that so they don't have to actually fight the current but it also it's just like sitting at a buffet table for them they can sit and and rest around a brush pile or, or some kind of cover and wait for bait to come by the other thing like I just showed here, the mouths of these creeks, a lot of those fish will be suspended. And they're just, it's just kind of like between breakfast and lunch. It's just an idle time for them. And once that current starts moving, then they set up on these creek channels coming out into these other places, these ditches, the places that are not so obvious. That's when they set up and they're positioned to feed and they're ready to feed. You'll see the, we saw the weights yesterday and you'll see them today. We have that lull. There's always an early morning bite in, and the offshore guys take advantage of that. I don't know why they, the shallow bite has been off early in the morning. It seems to get better during the day. It's a little unusual, but when they start pulling that water, it helps everything it helps everybody the sunshine has helped the brush pile guys today a little more yesterday had so many clouds but to answer your question z when that current starts moving those fish set up to feed and that's why these guys can catch them so much better good useful practical information davy hi thank you so much great stuff from davy out on the water currently in the neighborhood of uh, chad pipkin right now who had been our leader we, got we a, took our midday we break. A, we got another new leader. Wow, Kyle Welcher with a five pounder. Wow. Wow, Kyle. He's up we, to 19 and a quarter on the day, 39 pounds and a half. Kind of wanting to hang with Kyle tomorrow. Yeah, a little bit. yeah, yeah. That was it was fun yeah. visiting with him today. He said ah. he was having a train wreck. Today's a train wreck. Yesterday and today yeah, was a train yeah, wreck, yeah, he said. Yeah, that's right. Kyle Welcher's also started the day as our rookie of the year. Points hey, no, leader. It's, I, I, now, he's a, a rookie of the year leader. He was or still is a professional poker player. Well, I think that you can just describe professional gambler. You could just put that overall because he's a gambler either on the Elite Series, making checks, trying to cash, you know, win, or, or actually at the fish poker and, table. Fish and cards. Yes, yeah. So yes. I'm not going to answer your question. But did I, correct me from before. He for, was, yes, for, he was a still professional. Still still competes. Yes. And saved his money from poker to go bass fishing. Yep. I keep playing poker, kid. And then, yeah, I know, and then, yeah. hey, you're not getting any more legitimate here. <laughs> What's been really cool for him is he generated that that online poker and then actual like you know uh, I right. guess sanctioned poker tournaments and whatnot and turned it into fishing, but also a YouTube platform. And he spent all of his free time when he wasn't doing poker, doing YouTube videos. And now he is of, of that generation, my generation, I guess that is now making money off YouTube as well and fishing the elites. He's gained a big following. And as a rookie, you would be amazed at how many people were in our comments saying, I knew this kid was going to be great. I've been watching him for the last few years on YouTube and he's so smart, so great with fishing. That's fantastic. It's going to be awesome. So Welcher's uh, one of those guys that has sold out to do this. And he wears the same sunglasses in both venues. I got to get into that YouTube poker fishing. <laughs> Jamie Hartman now trying his hand around a few boat docks for right now. Going to let the let his place his, his place rest. You, you said he just really had one place he was leaning on. Uh, and then that, if you really look at that quad box right there, if you look at Bill Lowen and Clark Wendland on your left, guys that are fishing multiple areas have a have expansive areas to fish throughout Lake Eufaula. Kyle Monte and Jamie Hartman still with a very respectable day so far mm -hmm. have done at least from what we've seen oh, they've man, done a grinding. lot with a little hard on for this a big lake. bite uh it ain't coming easy man i don't know i don't know if the other guys are catching them or not but i see these fish seem to be a little off for me today um i mean i i had a couple fish pick it up and drop it and that one fish I just caught, that three, I don't know, three and a half, whatever it was, my God, I pegged that thing, I don't know how many times, and then finally he bit. So I'm sure it's not off for everybody and it's not around the lake, but uh, it's off for me. And I'm still in search of one more big bite. I'm happy with my weight, I really am. I got 16 plus, but it'll get me into tomorrow. But now we're trying to get into the next day, and then we'll take it from there. But, man, it's a grind. I've hit so many pot brush piles, and I can't get a bite out of them. They're just, 
either A, not there, or B, not biting. Jamie Hartman, the native New Yorker at 21, close to 21 and a half yesterday. Talking a about one- combination of both. Talking about needing one more big bite. Maybe not necessarily to, to get on top of the lead, but just to give him the freedom to go and look for some more stuff maybe. Not worry about the, yeah, his score run, for the rest of the day. run right over the shallow part of that point. Did you see the size of that alligator that we just had in that quad box? I mean, it was enormous. I missed it. it really? was enormous. Don't feed them would be my advice. I, I still think it's, it's amazing that we've not seen a crankbait, a deep dive and crankbait be a bigger player uh, on some of these a little bit more barren ledges. You know, one thing about the electronics today is they're pretty amazing and it's got a lot of glare on it right now. It's pretty difficult to see, but but what what you do with it is is that it actually looks out in front of the boat and it's a clear real-time picture. And so the, the way it really, really helps, can I see fish? Yeah, I see fish, but good grief. I mean, there's so many fish in this lake that you see everything. You see catfish and drum and carp, and, and, but what I really see is, is brush. And, you know, I can see exactly where to cast um, every time I find a pile. And, you know, it, it's, it's really the reason that I fish brush piles now. You know, I've always known brush piles were a thing on this lake. You know, people back when, you know, I used to fish tournaments here, say 10, 15 years, 20 years ago, they, they talked about brush piles, brush piles, brush piles, but they had to go set their own brush piles. It's, it's very difficult to go find them without the current electronics you have. You can either set them, hard work, or you can, you gotta go find them. And when I, when I idle, I've got side view and I look out, you know, you can set your unit any way you want to. I like to look at about 80 feet on both sides. I can't see a real detailed picture, but at least what I can see is, is if there's something there. I, all I do is I go over there, I hit a waypoint, put a waypoint on that brush pile. And a lot of times I just keep on going. I don't even fish it. And you know, it's, I mean, it's made it where I can efficiently fish brush piles. I don't have to come here and sink brush or find, you know, somehow, uh, I mean, it's the only way. It's idling over them is, is impossible. You've got to, and then when I get up here and start fishing them, I basically use live scope and and it just tells me exactly where the brush is. So my casts aren't wasted. You know, I'm, I'm basically casting right on in the brush, first cast, and get a bite, great. Don't move on, go to another one. Can you tell Clark hosts his own TV show in Texas? <laughs> yeah, no, really? I, I didn't know that. Yes. Hunting and fishing in Texas. He is a, he's a yes. legend in Texas and, and, and worldwide. And uh, he has been through all the different advances in electronics, uh, or a good many of them. He's not as old a dude as I am, but he's, he's been around a while. Come on, fish, now. If them fish don't bite up through there, it's gonna be the worst letdown ever. What's incredible right now is how everyone is fishing shallow. Oh, yeah. I think he is far from done today. Oh, absolutely. Call that it's like, one. Kind of like it just started. Call that one right there, right in front of us. Bill Lowen on top. No, excuse me. Bill Lowen in second place. He was on top about five minutes ago. Kyle Welcher, the rookie, now on top with almost 40 wow. pounds of fish. Look yeah. at how tight that leaderboard is. Oh, my, God. my gosh. Bill Lowen will uh, cull up a little bit. I don't know if it'll be enough to catch Kyle Welcher, Drew Benton, hanging in there very well, as is Clark Winland. Chad Pipkins is the man who had the lead uh, less than an hour ago. Things are changing and changing fast, and we like it that way.
take a quick break and re- be right back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run. For life. They know reliability starts here. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Bassmaster live on Eufaula. Of course, we've got two and a half hours left in our afternoon session here. Day two action in the DeWalt Elite event. Tomorrow, same story. We'll start out at 8 a.m. Eastern time, bring you three hours of morning action. Step back for an hour, start again at 12 noon, bring you all the way to weigh-in time. That's when we'll find our 10. Identify the 10 who will fish for the championship on championship Saturday. Kyle Welcher he was, mm. uh, came into this this day of fishing as the rookie of the year leader. Had a great top 10 finish down at uh, St. John's River. Yes. And uh, man, based on what he like how the, he finishes today, he could be like bubbling, bobbing right on the top there with uh, with Whitaker. Exactly. I'd like that, to uh, find out from our Matthew Berry of Fantasy Fishing, well, Ron Moore, uh-huh. of how many people picked Kyle Welcher in this tournament later on. I think I can get you that answer real quick, like. I'd rather three. have it on the screen of knowledge. Well, it is. <laughs> we can see this here. We can see this. Oh, there we go. Yeah. 3.9%. Yeah. And it was that Dave Mercer's pick. Really? To do well in this event. Wow. Yeah, man. so we're going to have to give some Canadian there love to him. Oh, yeah. Great catches all day long on Lake Eufaula. Phenomenal weigh in with Trip Weldon, Dave Mercer yesterday. And very exciting. Hey, you know, we don't talk about that bass right there. I mean, that's a big one yeah, baby. for Bill Lowen. That's the one, one of the only times we've seen him leave his primary technique, his primary pattern of those water wheels, goes to a boat dock. It's, it's fish like that that you kind of take for granted near the end of the tournament. That was a major audible he called an hour, hour ago. Hummingbird Lay of the Lake. Uh, we're right here on the border between Alabama and Georgia on the Chattahoochee River flowing down out of the southern Appalachians. Forms Lake Lanier above Atlanta. We get West Point Lake. We get this one. You follow down to Seminole and out through Apalachicola Bay into the Gulf of Mexico. Very legendary water for bass fishing in the southeast. Exactly right. One of the longest playing fields that we'll see all year. 
about 85 miles from Dam up the Chattahoochee River. And as we said, if you're just tuning in to Bassmasters right now, it's really a deep situation on this lower end. We've got a couple guys like Jake Whitaker, Bill Lowen in the Mid Lake area fishing shallow, but for the most part, if you look to the right of your screen, that's the deeper area of you follow. You follow as you fly up the river system. That's predominantly where most of your shallow guys that are gonna start shallow, stay shallow, and live shallow are gonna be. But again, one of our longest playing fields we'll see all year long. I, I can speak, not right <laughs> now, but I can. The, the lake speaks for itself. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal place. There's our Rookie of the Year stats right there coming into the, today. Kyle Welcher, again, based on that top 10 finish down there at the St. Johns River in the first of our two events that we've got to, at least partially in the book so far this season of 2020. Cody Holland, West Coast guy, Taku Ito, international angler. Buddy Gross, Wes Logan, Caleb Kupal, Austin Felix, Destin Mary, Bob Downey, and Ed Loffer. No, wait, Ed Loffer in the third. I don't think that was right. Ed was, Ed is not yeah, a rookie. Ed, Ed is not a rookie. Ed, Ed is not a rookie. Actually, Ed's pretty accomplished. Really, actually, neither is Buddy Gross in a Well, <laughs> no, by standards, but right. yes. Yes. Hey, hey, we got some bonus Oop. coverage of Kyle Welcher right now. And, and Kyle, man, good to see you. We said we'd be back. We came back, and uh, seems like it's a little less of a train wreck now as, as things stand. Tell us what's been going on. Yeah, I'm really glad I gave you a reason to come back. So I don't know what happened. The sun got out. There's some hard shade lines, and I, I just caught a good one off the dock. I caught a good one on top of it. I hit a brush pile and caught a good one and hit a road bed and caught a good one. So we're just hitting everything that looks good and, you know, getting a bite here and there. Kyle, real quick, we understand that you funded your fishing career by playing professional poker. Have you retired, or do you still kind of jump in every now and then? Well, I still play every now and then, so you can't officially retire from poker because you can play on the weekends or whenever, so you can't officially retire, but I still do play sometimes. I really like to play the game, but now I just kind of keep the stress of, uh, you know, winning or losing a lot of money out of my life and gamble right here on the front of this boat. Kyle, we can't wait to weigh in time, see what guy. you bring to the weigh-in. Yeah, yeah, my he guy is. right there. Yeah, we want to spend, <laughs> I have right. a feeling we'll be spending some time with Kyle tomorrow. That'll be fun. Kyle, we're going to show everybody for a treat that big catch of yours one more time from down on the St. John's River. So you and everybody watching today get to I'd like to spend to some time that. with Kyle out of the boat. Okay. You know? I hear you. Just kind of dissect his whole strategy of a day. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! Look at that one, baby! Holy crap! What? Woo! What? <laughs> Kyle's sort of kind of the real deal, in all honesty. Oh, for if sure. You, if you look at, and, and just listening to him talk about his day here, very, very few anglers have made offshore work and then going shallow, kind of bouncing in and out. And a lot of the locals said, to win this tournament, you might have to do a little bit of both. He is one of the only anglers that we've been on a little bit that has actually executed. There's been a lot of other anglers that have tried, but he's executed. Like I said, I think we'll be with him all day tomorrow. It'd be fun to break down how he prepared for this tournament, exactly what his game plan was, what he had in mind to do, and how he's adjusted through the course of the first two days. Hey, Welcher, he said it himself, but also other people who know Kyle said, man, if he can figure out how to catch them off the bank, kid's going to be the real deal because he can figure them out. When no one else catches them shallow, he can figure it out shallow. So uh, we know he's got that part of his game dialed in. Get back over to third year Bassmaster Elite Series Pro from Florida. Kyle Monty started the day in second place, had a fabulous day one. There she is. Right. Oh! Just freaking switched to that jig. Four pounder.
Mmm. Get another one here in a second. Even bigger. Well, that was a tough one to lose. Four pounder mm. right there for Kyle Monte. Would have been meaningful. That was right in his key deal where the majority of his bigger fish came yesterday. And Kyle. Kyle was actually disappointed in what he caught yesterday. Actually weighed one in that was a two and a half pound. Uh-oh. Hey, Here first we go. look at John Cox. Ooh, and he's yes. not offshore. Like yes. Was that the rumor that he was fishing no, offshore? No, he said mostly? that he was really disappointed that he didn't figure it out shallow as good, and so he was fishing offshore yesterday. That is one of the scariest shallow water anglers on the planet, John Cox. And he just, this time of year is when you see him do things so unorthodox from a lot of the other anglers that fish shallow. It hurts when you make a change like that, dude, after knowing you got to make a change, do something different. And the first cast with it, a big one bites it and it comes off. You want to feel good because you got the bite but the fish is still swimming out there instead of in my life. Cox sitting there, I don't, I don't know what his definition of offshore is. Maybe he just was like more than one cast off the bank and he considers that offshore, but he's still shallow maybe. <laughs> got a new angler in our top 10, Brandon Cobb, two-time winner last year. He's got 18 pounds on the day and he's, uh, he's jumped up to sixth place. So we got both of our two-time winners from last year in the top 10 here. Hartman's right behind him, five ounces back of him. It's a rough crew out here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. There are a bunch of guys that are ready kind of to take usual, you apart. The usual suspects <laughs> yeah. are starting to show up now. Yeah, yeah. Dangerous place to walk around for sure. Kyle Welcher, though, the man on top, the rookie of the year, leader to start this day making his position look even better and better as the day goes on. Bill Lowen was up, he's down, he's back up again. Drew Benton hanging steady along with Clark Winlet. Oh, we are far from done on this day. Day number two on the Bassmaster Elite Series event. Back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minn Kota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. Skeeter, is it still setting the standard? Let's see. First basketball, first U.S. Coast Guard approved basketball, first B-hole pad design, largest owners tournament, great fish and win program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite basketball. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life.
You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Into our afternoon session, three o'clock, the way in time. That picture from Fort Worth, Texas. Beautiful town, really a big town, super small town feel, great people, big sports town as well. It's gonna be even bigger sports. Town March 19th through the 21st, the three days to decide the world championship of bass fishing. The 2021 Bassmaster Classic fished on Lake Ray Roberts, just north and east of Fort Worth there. Trinity River should be good for some big, big bass and a brand new arena that's just been built, the Dickies Arena, close to the TCU campus. Beautiful spot, just a natural to host this big, big event. Make your plans right now to be in Fort Worth in March. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun, been a whole lot of fun so far. First day and a half here on Lake Eufaula, legendary Lake Eufaula in Alabama, and we've got a new leader. In case you're just joining up with us, rookie Kyle Welcher from out of, out of Alabama has taken over the lead from Bill Lowen. Drew Benton, Clark Winland. There's the cut. Yeah, Derek Hudden, all the man on it right now. You don't make 40, you don't make it to tomorrow. You're starting to see that cut line go up. About every half hour, you'll see it kind of notch up a quarter pound to a half a pound. And we're, we're guessing somewhere in that 32 to 33 pound range still. I see John Cruz there. It's his 42nd birthday today. He just got his limit and called up with a four pounder. He's trying to get in there. He started at 38 today. Yeah, he, was, he was tied with the bubble boy. Yeah. Cruel. Cruel. What happened there? He had 19 and changed yesterday, sitting there right inside the top 20, wow. I believe, or 25. Can't get anything big today. Everything's under two or two or less. See if we can slide over to Chris Aldane. Fireworks early this morning in Chris Aldane's boat. One of the biggest, the biggest one we've had on camera so far in this event. Stay, stay on there. Stay on there. Unless it's, oh yeah. Stay. Unless it's hooked weird. No, no, it's a big one. Gosh, stay on there. Yeah! <laughs> Hold on, we got standby. We got boats coming by. My floor's wet, carpet's wet. It's good. <laughs> That's a giant right there. Yeah! -hoo -hoo! That's a big old you fall a bass right there. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Boom! So, as you saw in those clips there, giant flutter spoons work, especially in the summertime on big bass. And whenever, you know, when we're on tour and we're, you know, they schedule a tournament in the summertime, June, July, and we go to big fish fisheries like a Lake Fork, like a Lake Eufaula, any of the Tennessee River lakes, when there's a larger than normal, uh, you know, big bass population, I always go for that seven or eight, eight inch spoon. It's a structure, it's an offshore structure type lure. And, you know, if you think about it, spoons have been around for a long time and you could buy spoons for uh, bluegill panfish, uh, walleye, musky, um, basically it's stripers, basically any type of, of game fish uh, eats a spoon. And it is basically a flutter spoon where, you know, you find structure and that all boils down to practice and you find drop offs and ledges and um, you set up just up current or just down current of those areas and you just let it flutter through there. It's two and a half ounces and it's just a big piece of metal um, although it's two and a half ounces, it falls like it's a quarter ounce or a three eighths ounce lure um, because it flutters. And I'm throwing this on braided line and a long rod, seven foot eight rod with a longer than normal butt. This is a Mega Bass Destroyer Mark 48. It's my swim bait rod. A 40 pound test braided line to an FG knot to a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. 
real big line and we're talking big fish a three aught trocar uh treble hook on the end of it and i put a little feather on there for a little extra flash but the thing with a flutter spoon is it, it just triggers big bass um you know not a lot of lures especially when it's calm like this there's just a little bit of current not a lot of lures will get those types of bass to to strike to actually hit and commit um, a flutter spoon is one of them, a hair jig is one of them, but when it's real tough in the summertime, it's real hot, there's something about that fluttering action and fluttering down that triggers that fish into biting. Um, and you know, a lot of times in the summertime on this offshore structure, there's a lot of bait fish around the area and they're up, they're always upwards towards the surface, big gizzard shad, and those big five, six, seven pound bass like I caught this morning, um, just kind of cruise underneath them along these shell bars. And when they see kind of dying bait fish kind of go through uh, those areas, those bars, that's when they attack and that's exactly what this thing imitates. So. I start throwing it when the water temperatures are like 80 degrees and and um, and up. So like 80 to 85 degrees, just like we have here. Perfect time for flutter spoon fishing. Um, but June and July are the best times to throw the flutter spoon, and it's shown. Last year at Lake Gunnersville, uh, I had a second place finish throwing this giant thing, and and again, it just triggers a lot of a lot of big bites. So. Um, and for the whole trailer hook thing, I had a lot of people message me um, in the bass fishing world about adding the trailer hook onto the spoon after last year. And I'll tell you what, when you add a trailer hook to a big flutter spoon, it really throws off the action of, of, the, of the actual spoon. It has to flutter down right. It has to flutter real smooth and twist like a little ballerina, man. And that's what triggers them. So every time you add to that bait, it really hinders the action of it and you won't get the bite. So. Um, it's a killer technique. I don't know if anyone else is on the lake is throwing it this week, but if I get around them, they will bite this thing. Well, that pretty much breaks it down right there. We have not got confirmation. We had heard he was leading for the Sports Center top 10 highlight of the day at our lunchtime break. Is that correct? I do not know. That. I think you I said web, I, web I gym I, nominee. Web jam. I yeah. don't know. I don't know <laughs> okay. what I'm he, sorry. He has I, the yeah, golden don't, glove don't secured. Yeah, I don't know. That, that was our AFCO taste the bait, by the way. Uh, yes. They were delivered superbly, I, as always, by Chris Eldane. Predominantly I, made up everything I just said. I've been told hashtag brush piles is, is trending on Twitter, though. Well, it really? Wow. <laughs> Zona's a big Twitter, Twitter guy. We need, we need to start talking about brush piles here. We haven't, no, wait a minute, we've, we've been all over that. Brandon Cobb called again, except the third place with 19 pounds. Today started 20th, the 19-3. Gosh, not the size he's been yeah. looking for. He has gone that has through about them today. Times today. But it's okay. You just gotta go through lots of them. Gotta be two and a half or better to help Clark at this point. I just love getting bit. You get bit, you just feel like the big one can happen. So yesterday, Brandon Lester caught 43 bass from brush piles. Today he's got 21 bass. Mm. He's caught. Still in that 21st place, like that region of the standings. He, he hadn't broken in the top 10 with that. He needs a kicker, but he's just getting the quantity, not the quality. It's like a ton of new brush. That's Z Zaldane's issue as well. He's got three fish yep. under two pounds still with that 6'8 and two and a half pounder. Todd Otten currently 12th place. I think, I think you can. Started in sixth. Of course, that fresh stuff's pretty good sometimes. Oh, that poor Doc has seen better days. I got it right here. Yeah, you think he'll help me? I was sitting here kind of daydreaming. Two and a quarter, two and a half. Yeah, probably so. Tom 
Todd, South Carolina veteran, runner-up in the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic. I had y'all lined up there, I could see. Help if any for Todd Otten. The problem is they all can't catch. Said two and a half, it's close to pound. Yeah. And again, one of those Woo! anglers that's made, <laughs> appears to have made a lot out of a little, really just fishing what's in front of them throughout the day. Todd Otten said on stage with Dave Mercer yesterday, feel like I burned a lot of my areas out, caught what lived there. Yeah, Todd Otten bit. still kind of hanging in the game right now. Look at that thing. Hulk's back. Todd, who when he gets around to his confidence situations, his swim jigs and chatterbaits and stuff like that, he is deadly. He's he is quietly there at the end of the tournament. Oh, yeah. He always seems to show up, show up big. So. Todd Otten looking to bust back into the top 10 at this point right now. Started in 6, now in 12. Kyle Welcher, the rookie, leader rookie of the year standings to start this day, is still on top. Lowen, Cobb, and Benton will be right back. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minkota. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Saber FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Getting going again with the 2020 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series, a four-day tournament. We're right in the middle of day number two. 40 will advance to day three, and on day four, the championship Sunday, it will be 10, folks. Be a busy day on ESPN2 Saturday, Will, but guess what? Going to bring you the final three hours of fishing here. Saturday on ESPN2 Championship Saturday. Final three hours of fishing starting at noon Eastern Time. 
So make plans to watch. It's going to be an exciting three hours Have taking you right up to the final weigh-in. A championship Saturday? You know, we've had every other time but Saturday. We've I had many right. a championship Monday because of delays. Never had a championship Saturday. That's so. a good point. Kyle Welcher wants to be there at the end of it all. He's got your lead right now. Yeah, but you you got to get up up in the top 40 if you want even a shot at making the fishing tomorrow. And Derek Hudnell, first man still in. Jeff Gustafson, first man out. And Garrett Paquette, that's how brutal the game can yes. be. He spent more time than anyone atop the leaderboard yesterday. And look at him. He's, he's out of the cut as it stands right now. Not to say he couldn't turn Last things night. around with a couple of Matt Heron. swings of the rock. Yeah, Matt Heron. Matt Heron actually in danger of not making the cut right now. One of the favorites coming into this event. Spent a lot of time with him yesterday as well. Wes Logan and Todd Auden, that bottom right of your screen, they just passed each other fishing the same stretch. Logan having a tough day, two fish for five pounds. 66th missing the cut right now. He's a promising rookie as well, him and Welcher. I mean, there ain't even really like no little, you know what I mean? This thing was full of Piggins and little ones yesterday. Everybody has just left me. Well, thanks for biting yesterday. Big difference weather-wise from yesterday was low-hanging clouds, dark, yes. so humid, oppressive that humidity. That big weight, that big jig. Now you can see high skies, blue skies, less humidity. Matt Arias pulled into second place. A five-pounder's giving him 18 pounds, 10 ounces today, and he's jumped from uh, jumped up from 13th place to second. Matt Airy, one of these guys you think probably going to win one of these things sooner or later. So it took just under 22 pounds to have a camera in your boat today, our top six. 21.13, yep. what, yeah. What will it be at tomorrow? 10 bass weighing... 40 or 39 and a half. Ooh. 40. 40. Are you going to say that much I go lower? 40. I was yeah. thinking. Huh? I go 40. 40? 40? Yeah. yeah. This, you you need a place 40 pounds. You need a four pound average. Yeah. You make me feel like a million bucks when I guess what you're thinking. I might not actually believe that it's 40, but I'm going to say what you're thinking. You Screaming knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Get me some bonus points for that one. It's still amazing, though, we see a guy like Matt Airy jump up into second with that five-pounder, and we see Winlit, Hartman, all these guys catching big ones offshore, and then a bunch in between, and all it takes is one fish shallow for Lowen and Whitaker, and they're, like, equalizing it, and it feels like they're losing ground by the minute, but they're not. I cannot recall a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament that we have seen so many lead changes throughout the first two days oh, of competition. No. You, you see it a little bit the first few hours, obviously, but throughout a day and a half to two days, you start to compress it to where there's, okay, there's eight guys, to, ten guys to really watch. But it's been all over the board as, as far as lead changes throughout this tournament. This was my juice yesterday. You know, I've only had what, one For bite out of here today? You know, it's hard to describe, but I'm going to try. Uh -huh. Go back earlier in the day. You know, we said that Chris Zaldane was the power pole replay of the day. And thus far, if you're to probably to vote throughout this studio, 
or anybody outside of here, it would still be the power pole replay of the day. Especially for a single fish. For a single fish. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you the, the I'm going to tell you the disjointed flurry that I just went on right there. Jimmy Hartman earlier this morning, he said he had one key ledge area fishing 20 to 25 feet of water. You know, I said, look, if I'm going to survive you know, in book. this tournament, this spot right here is going to have to put to pay off. Well, it paid off in a big way. Really, the first 45 minutes of competition, oh my God. almost all the way down to the dam, not this. quite there. Jamie Hartman put on a vulgar, vulgar display of power. Have you ever seen Look at that fish like right that there. Before. That is a gluttonous pig, oh Tommy Sanders. Is, that is a, that a fish with a problem no, right there. That fish right there is a legal caught fish caught on a 10 inch worm, yet had <laughs> an Alabama rig with five baits <laughs> stuck in its mouth. Jamie Hartman, you are the power pole flurry replay. That's mine. Of the day. <laughs> oh my God. A crazy eight, crazy a rig fish, man. That fish. <laughs> you tell me these fish ain't hungry here, and they ain't mean, like downright mean. That dude had a face full of metal, five baits in his. He had one bait stuck in, Brad, braid wrapped all the way around him. All five baits were still on the Alabama rig, and he chokes my worm. <laughs> I had to confirm that my worm was there, my hook was in his mouth. It was crazy. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I mean, I've caught them with baits in their mouth, but never an Alabama rig. Could you imagine? That fish has to swim around that whole time with all that. He's got braces. And uh, he comes and eats my worm still. I, it's unfortunate that he wasn't a four or five pounder, but. Hey, <laughs> he filled my limit out, and that's what I needed, so. Craziest catch I've ever had, no doubt. No doubt. I've never seen that. Lucky catch for heart, lucky catch for the fish. <laughs> Who last year to... caught, caught a fish with a cull tag still in its mouth? Oh, we've had a few of those over the years. We've had a couple yeah. of those. Yeah. Because yeah. some of the yeah. cull tags I just remember don't last float as much, yeah. I'd like another crazy catch right about now. All right, with that. I just don't think they're there, man. Jamie Hartman, great story. Stalwart tournament fisherman, local sort of Oneida Lake, northern New York guy who uh, gave it all up, man, sold it all, joined the Bassmaster Elite Series and met with success. It's a, Pretty good decision by anyone's estimation. We are about to get out of here, start heading back up. Now we did have somebody this? a few years ago caught one with a cigar in his working. mouth. Was that correct? <laughs> no, that was no. No. I don't know. I, I think that's incorrect. No. Oh well. It's not like I wore out what, what lived there yesterday, because they weren't there to begin with. They got there as the day went on. Huh? Look good. Nice fish being caught. Drew Bent with a 314. Got up to uh, 17 and a half pounds hey. on day fourth place. Patrick Walters with a five pounder. Jim really? Cox, four pounder up to uh, 11th, 11th place. Walters needed that yesterday yes. for sure. I'll take it today. He is 36 right now. He's still got two one pound, two ounce fish in his life. Let me put my, my juicy one back on. There's 
a lot of guys. Zaldane Lowen with with one pound, one and a quarter fish. If they catch one of their five and a halves, they're in the lead. That's how tight it is. That's six and a half. First thing, but by Zell, that's by far the biggest one we've seen caught offshore. You were talking about oh, yeah. the weights offshore, right? With, oh, in general, it, I mean, oh. it, it's probably going to rival, if not be better than Mike Huff's 612 yeah. big bass of the tournament. But the only other big one we've even heard of caught offshore was Lipipkin had a four and a half. That's, you know, there haven't been a lot of giants taken offshore today. Another deformed bass. You see how he's. Boy, he's just. Steadily he caught them all day long. There, he kind of now right. he might not weigh in the it's biggest stringer today, but from a numbers standpoint, oh yeah. Dialed in, like you said, that's how you describe Clark Winlet. Hanging in there, top six. As it stands now. If it finished right now, he'd be with us again tomorrow, full time. Well, it's Brandon an interesting Cox. top ten, though. Boy, yeah, absolutely, absolutely full of really good fishermen. Kyle Welcher, the one on top, the rookie from Alabama. On top here on Alabama's Lake Eufaula. We'll take a break and be back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run. For life. They know reliability starts here. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mincota. All kinds of approaches, all kinds of techniques. Boy, it's just an ideal tournament. We are enjoying this event's second stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series at Lake Eufaula. Let's pause, though, for a bass trivia interlude, if you will. Which Wait, angler what? was not in striking distance, was not in striking distance, to win the 2002 Bassmaster Tour event on Lake Eufaula? Would it have been... Rick Clun, Larry Nixon, George Cochran, I, or Roland Martin. We'll give you 10 seconds to ponder think that. Think I know this. Okay, everybody think about that. This I, has been pushed out on social media yes, as well, I, Ronnie. I'll give the results of what the fans thought after we give our answers. I oh, after we give our answers. Okay, Z. Arkansas's own, one of Arkansas's own, George Cochran. I'm going to say one of Arkansas's own, Larry Nixon. B. I'll go different from y'all, and I'll pick Rick Clun, A. All right. What, 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 Such, what do you Such, pick? Wow. Oh, wow. Such knows. Rick Clun. It is Rick Clun. Wow. wow. So how wow. about this? On social, 9% yep, picked we do Rick it for Clun. A <laughs> they, they, nine, 9% 9 got it right picking Rick Clun. 46% thought Roland Martin didn't have a shot, but he did in that event. He wasn't striking distance. Oh, oh I was thinking about it another year. Sorry. 
That's a good one. That's a good good trivia question. Suki, did you come up with that one? Yes, I did. Very well done. Back out on the water right now, Bassmaster Live, Kyle Monty. I'm looking for a big bite. I'm trying to mix it up enough to get a feel for what's going on. I don't know if it's just really tough or I'm not hitting the stuff at the right time or if I'm missing something. So I'm going to mess around. I got this pile and one more. Hit them pretty quick. Got one little shallow pocket right up here I got bit in. And then make a move, do something. Fish some schools, I don't know. I gotta upgrade my small fish in there. Kyle's best finish last year, fifth place. The Cherokee Casino Tahlequah. I'm kind of torn between staying around this area so I can go back and hit the place where I started and caught them all, or. Just bail on that all together and try to go scratch up some three and a half, four pounder somewhere. Those schools that I found, they were smaller fish. I, I didn't see any five, six pounders, but I could use some quality right now to go with that one good one. Get back in the game. That's what's crazy about our sports. We don't know what everybody else is doing or what they have or how far behind or ahead you are. It's just a feeling that I have, I mean, based on the weights and the lake that you're on. But I mean, it could be, could be a little bit tougher, but I'm not banking on that. I'm gonna keep running stuff where I think I can get a big bite for another hour or so here and then just go try to get some, some fish after that. It's all on the way back, so. Let's make a milk run. With Chris Aldane on the right. Kyle Monty right now again. Chris Aldane. Giant fish to start his day this morning. Now he's about four pounds behind our leader and out of the top 12. Such mentioned he's got a couple of really small ones to, to replace here before he goes to weigh in. Good. With it being so sunny out. Getting back to summer. All right, go to that next one. You know, we've seen Zaldane have two really big mornings yesterday. Even though he caught a giant this morning yesterday, he caught multiple big ones, quality fish. Where were you really yet to see him? Besides that one that we saw him catch in the last hour yesterday up shallow, capitalize on anything besides this spot. He's kept a lot of other stuff honest, but really hasn't capitalized where he's added to this one key spot. Carp. That's a bass. That was a bass right there. Pretty good one too. Bassmaster Classic champ, champ sure. Hank Cherry just called up to 15 and a half. Thank you. He's jumping 41st to 23rd. That 
one more spoon cast and then we're going flipping some reels this time. Davy Height, a great history here on this lake. As has been mentioned so many times in the past year, for some reason, Davey Height is a great fisher, the best fisherman to ever fish the month of May. That's exactly that right. That has been, and, and it's true. It's true. He is. He's great in so many ways. And Davey, you have caught up with a man who's put up a great effort today, Kyle Welcher, the rookie. What, what are you observing? Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I was able to go up and talk to Kyle just a little bit. He just caught two fish. Uh, it's it's just easy for him right now. He, I ask him, you know, are you fishing just brush piles? Are you fishing shallow? Are you fishing, you know, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm fishing all of it. I'm fishing all of it. He said, I go up and throw a frog around brim beds every now and then, and this is a brush pile right here, and I caught some off of a road bed. He's just fishing. Uh, you know, sometimes you get dialed in, so to speak, not on one thing like Clark Winland is those brush piles in a certain depth range, but he's just everything he looks at turns out to be good. He's throwing a worm and a frog. He's not he said he's, he's thrown a crankbait quite a bit, has not been able to catch anything at all on the crankbaits. Right now he's on a flat area with, with brush. One thing I have noticed, a lot of these brush piles are not close to the drops. They're up on these big expansive flats. Davey, real quick, talk about for, for a viewer at home that, that might be just tuning in to the Bassmasters, how hard it is to actually fish deep, then go shallow, then go deep, where you're bouncing in and out and actually execute that well it's it's difficult more difficult for some people than others i was like kyle i, I could go in shallow and go out a little deeper back and forth bounce around and a tournament like this is ones that i seem to do well in but you have i just left john cox he caught a four pounder and culled up you know you know where john cox is going to be you know where bill Owens is going to be they're some of the best shallow water fishermen in the world but then also you know where chad pipkins is going to be um, you know, people like to just stay in their comfort zone and, and figure out shallow or deep and just feel comfortable about what they're doing. And that means so much because confidence, you know, this is a mental game for us, no doubt about it. It's an individual sport. You make the decisions. You're the captain of your boat. You're the captain up on the front of the boat. You make the decisions whether to stay, whether to go, whether to fish shallow, whether to fish deep. And most people just want to get in that comfort zone and do one or the other. But Kyle Wetcher is one of those, like we talked about, kind of unusual that'll go up and fish shallow and fish a frog, then come back out and fish a road bed or come back out and fish a, a brush pile. It's a little unusual and sometimes that doesn't work. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. You can be in shallow when the deeper bite is happening and you could be out deep when those shallow fish turn on, which seems to be in the afternoon right before they turn the water on. So you can miss you know, the window of opportunity, so to speak. But I always felt comfortable just, hey, if it's not, if I'm not feeling it up shallow, then I'm going to go out deep. If I'm not feeling it, but right now, that's the main thing I'd like to just say about Kyle Welcher. He's feeling it. And wherever he goes, he feels comfortable throwing in a brush or throwing a frog up in that water willow. Davey, we're taking a look at a. Yeah, dude, he hit it like a giant. He's pinned too, dude. Like, what is going on? Thank you, Lord. That, look how one. fat that Good fish one. is. It's the fattest one I've caught. Solid, solid topwater bite right there. Just trying to keep Monty. him honest, man. Davey's still on. Davey, I have one question for you. You still with us? Well, that's a three pounder. Yep, yep. Hey, you're talking about everything going right, everything being intuitive, being good. in the zone. You know, it's like it almost sounds like what a, what a baseball butt. pitcher feels like sometime or a, or a golfer. Have, have you ever been able to dial up that feeling at will or is it, it just something that happens? You just wait for it to come along. Great question, Tommy. I mean, it's just something that happens. Everybody wants to be in that zone. I mean, I played other sports. I mean, sometimes a basketball goal looks like it's this big around. And sometimes it looks like it's this big around, yeah. even smaller than, you know, and, and when you're playing baseball, sometimes the, the baseball looks like it's as big as a softball or, or even bigger, maybe like a volleyball, and you can do no wrong. You can't miss it. The fishing is the same thing. It's mental, and you can't, you can't manufacture that. Either it happens or it don't. But here's one thing. You need to feel comfortable in what you're doing. We've heard a lot of these lead anglers talk about, you know, Bill Lowen yesterday. I talked to him at the weigh-in after he had taken the lead, you know, day one leader. He said, I don't feel comfortable out there. 
So you're not going to be in the zone if you're not comfortable. So you need to feel comfortable. And, and like Kyle Welcher, he feels comfortable in shallow or out deep. Some guys just don't feel comfortable doing one or the other. All right, David, good stuff. Thank you so much. Davey Height, always in the zone when he's reporting out on the water and in the studio. Good stuff out there. And Kyle Welcher in the zone and on top. Matt Airy. Mm, a little zony himself, I feel like, today in second place, making a big move up the leaderboard. Bill Lowen hanging in there after regaining his spot atop the leaderboard for a while. Drew Benton, Brandon Cobb, Clark Winland, Jamie Hartman, Chad Pipkins. Big names all up and down that leaderboard. And it's going to change. There'll be new ones before, before you know it. Take a break and be right back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Setting the standard. Let's see. First basketball, first U.S. Coast Guard approved basketball, first three hole pad design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite basketball. <laughs> yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So, yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. About an hour and a half's worth of fishing time for the majority of the 86 anglers out there. Second day action. The second event of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Next up on the card, Cayuga Lake. That's coming up, well, just a little more than a month. Mm -hmm. Up in the Finger Lakes region, beautiful place, perfect place to land in the middle of the summer. Great fishing, great place to hold a tournament as well. And, of course, the winner of that one was a man we spent a lot of time with today, Jamie Hartman, one of his two wins in 2019. We're looking forward to that one, the first of... Back to back to back. Three events. There will be a catch fest. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, it seems Every like it always is. Every time been there. Beautiful vegetation, man. They've, they've got it all. They have got the habitat for largemouth bass and smallmouth bass as well. Beautiful spot. Yuga Lake. Finger Lakes region. Back out to Kyle Monty. We saw Kyle put a good one in the boat. One of the first frogfish we've seen yeah. the entire tournament. Okeechobee, where they'll throw a frog once in a while down there. But problem is, it's just one little stretch that's deeper. 
Then I gotta go find something else. Not all this grass is good. That fish was right where he was supposed to be, the deepest grass in this whole pocket. Wind blowing on it. Might be a bite right through this little stretch here. But then I gotta scoot out of here. I know the guys at the barber shop are sitting there watching it, not doing anything today. They don't work anyway. So that fish a few minutes ago, I believe. Yeah. Watch this. Great camera work. Well done right there by Kyle Monty. Makes you want to see that thing that get blasted good again. Good shot. Hmm. I believe that's one gear Russ, cameraman. Something just moved that grass. Watch that. Yeah, let's, all, let's just let's just stay here a while. <laughs> all day, right there. I spoke with Monty. He told me he was just stoked to take Randy Moss out fishing. He just went to the dock to, to meet a guy and said, "Yeah, Randy, our client's going to be Randy. You take right, another boat." And Randy Moss pulls up. He's like, he immediately recognized him. Oh. Skinny. Don't believe he's going to do anything. Got to be two and a half. When he went with Moss, did they catch him? Yeah, he did said, they? He said nothing huge. Right, right. His, his Gosh, buddy, I wish I knew where there was some more of the six stuff pounder into the boat, but they were catching three or four pounders all day. Very successful trip. He even got some uh, a scoop that uh, Tom Brady was going to the Buccaneers wow. <laughs> before it was out in the news. So Monty said. There you go. For those of you that don't think you can catch a fish on top water in the middle of the day. Oh, would you say that Tom Brady's on the Buccaneers? Just, that doesn't sound, something wrong with hey, that. Hey, now, now his name that, initials are his team's initials. TB on TB. Yeah, but it just, just doesn't sound <laughs> right still. It doesn't work. Now it's just, well, it's, put the colors on. But it. I mean, look at the receiving core he has now. I mean, that is stellar. Yeah, last year, Mike Evans was getting 48 points a game or zero catches, so it was kind of hard to... So you're still living in fantasy right now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, that's why they call it like fantasy. fantasy. That's when fantasy becomes reality. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And reality becomes fantasy. They're biting a frog. I bet Jake's got some fish. <laughs> Roommates. All right, Russ.
Guys, I wanted to talk about two of our biggest movers today, and that's Kyle Welcher and that's Matt Airy. And both guys have kind of risen up in the last hour into our top two spots. And it's a tale of two different areas of the lake. And I'm going to zoom in on their some of their catches. But when you're looking at the map, this whole Alabama side is, is somewhat Matt Airy's territory. And then the Georgia side has been Welch's territory. We come up the lake, they're, they're, they're both fishing offshore, but mixing in some, some shallow as well, it looks like. And then you go up the lake after a good stretch, and it's the same kind of deal, except Welch's in this region and Aries in this region. So these two guys have obviously caught a lot of fish. You can see just by these two guys' markers, there's at least 40 fish here on their map. But these two guys over the last hour or so have now put themselves in contention. We should be able to see more of what they're doing uh, tomorrow on our camera coverage. But right now, a lot of these guys are kind of stretching themselves, not too thin, not too far from takeoff, but that mid-lake region is really paying off. Between White Oak to Patula or Patula, however you say it, I was corrected 15 times about it yesterday. Um, but between those two regions of the creeks, it seems like that is where a lot of this uh, work is getting done for anglers. Very good. Thank yes. you so much, Ronnie. We saw on the map, of, of course, uh, appearing at the top there, our host city, fantastic host city. We've got to mention you fall, Alabama. Absolutely. Very bass savvy place and a friendly place. And we are so thankful to be here for the second stop of the year. Look at that cut line. That's wow. today's story. You got to be in the top 40 or go home. Rick, Rick Clun, the legend in 40th place, Shane LeHue and Gary Paquette now has moved up into the cut line. So I feel better about him on that one, but what will happen in the remaining fishing time? We'll be back. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use with the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait. Fish bite and won't let go. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Bassmaster Elite season in full, full, uh, fully on the way here. We got 90 minutes of fishing, a little less, an average of 90 minutes of fishing for these, these anglers, these 86 anglers out there today. Big time entertainment tonight, Big coming night. up on ESPN. Tonight, ranked the top ranked featherweight contender, Jesse Magdaleno, taking on Yennefel Vicente, who is 
11 and 1 with 11 knockouts in his last 12 fights. Top of the card. That's our main event bout. Coverage of the preliminaries begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, the ESPN app, and ESPN Deportes. Ronnie, I find it hard to believe that I'm the only one picking Magdaleno tonight, and everybody in studio has, and don't get me wrong, Vicente is intimidating. His last few fights, dominant. But I'd love to put up a, a, a poll online hey, I, on what the fans think. I honestly, I was just about to tell you, I was looking at Twitter, and I, I've seen in the last 20 minutes, Conor McGregor has called out both of them to fight. You uh, know, like really? Just, yeah, no, probably not. No, but he will, yeah, though. He on, will, on. though, I promise. <laughs> Big fight going on out there. 40 anglers only are going to make it through tomorrow, and you got to fight your way into that top 40. If you are outside that cut line right now, you don't leave anything on the table. You, you throw what you've got the best you have at the problem at hand. No problems today, by and large, for Clark Winland. Started the day in the top five, still in the top 10. On an up and down day, that leaderboard's just been spinning before our yes. eyes, repopulating. Uh oh, and here we go again. <laughs> as I hoped. Ah. I was thinking that was going to be a real one. It's a nice one, but... just feel like he has set the hook enough times today where eventually it's going to be one of those like you it's it's like a, akin to a running back running the football eventually you've done it enough you're going to break free on one get out to our leader right now the rookie Kyle Welcher almost 40 pounds Davey Hyden, we talked to last hour, said he visited with Kyle a while ago. So Kyle's, man, everything's just been intuitive, perfect, been in the zone. Everything coming together. How much history does he have on this lake, Ronnie? You know? Welcher? Yes. I think originally, even though he's from the Opelika, Alabama right. region, that's what he's classified as, he has grown up and fished around West Point a whole lot. Okay. So I'd imagine Ufala was in that territory. Then he moved yep. to the Coosa River area. He's probably ventured there uh, plenty of times. And seeing how much idle time he has with not playing poker, probably has now, fished quite a bit. Now, you have known this is a, obviously a very, very young angler. You've known every college angler to, that have gone in the opens. Did you know him? I had seen him compete in some FLW events. Okay. And then his first season on the opens, uh, I mean, he just he just got it done in four events. He didn't need he didn't need wow. two seasons. He did it's it the first time. Yeah. Now he lives in that Chickamauga region of uh, Tennessee. Boy, Bill Lowen has he has pulled the plug on. His primary shallow deal, so productive with that this time of day yesterday, has just not happened so far. Really didn't expect to see him in a situation just exactly like no. what we're seeing right now.
Our man Davey Height from the water said that uh, Welcher told him that he's fished there a lot, but just not in June. Got it. Which probably makes sense since he likes to catch them shallow. Other times of the year, definitely going to be easier to catch them shallow than in June. Thank you to Davey. He's done a great job. He's a champion here. Bill Lowen, for all the trying parts of this day, is still hanging in there great. Well, absolutely. Just like, third place, right? Just a pound and a half behind the leader. Will this be the one for Bill Lowen? Still looking for his first Elite Series victory. So many times he's come close. Makes a ton of cuts. And just he's a complete angler. He's, he's always there, it seems like. Well, day one was big one for Bill, that's for sure. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the first day of fishing on Lake Eufaula. Wow. 83 out of 86 limits. Do much better Look than that. at the average bass. Big. That is impressive. Mike Huff's almost seven pounder. Taking the big bass of the day on day number one. Of course, Bill Lowen, the big bag. Did not see 15 limits over 20 pounds. No. Did not see yeah, that. That's, that's, yeah. I thought definitely thought like seven or eight. Yes. And at some point yesterday. Maxed out at 10. Cut weight 17 pounds. And think about this. I think down to like 70th was 14 pounds. So it was like six pounds from first to 40th and three from 40th to 70th. So there, there was plenty of people who didn't catch him yesterday within the cut range. Biggest surprise yesterday. Steve Kennedy, three bass. Absolutely. Yeah. There was three anglers yesterday that didn't catch a limit. One of them uh, pulled out for family emergency reasons. And the other two, Harvey Horn and uh, Steve Kennedy. Kennedy being just down the road in Auburn, Alabama, having right. three bass. Shocking. Three bass and a win on West Point just up the system. Kennedy today also has three bass for six that pounds. That is unreal. Again, only 10 anglers in the final day, and you would say, hey, boy, how great is that for them? They'll be all by themselves out here. Not, not going to be the case. Not at this time around. No, no. Uh, there will definitely be a lot of activity on the water tomorrow, even though we're going to cut the field down to 40. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks Drew, practicing for a very big local tournament, one of the biggest of the year, big local tournament on Saturday. So. Got some current out here now. <clears throat> Z, for those just tuning in on ESPN2, there's a lot of different obstacles in the sport of bass fishing, especially on the Elite Series, that other sports don't have. This is a public lake open to other people. Right. It's like if you played, you know, in Augusta, you're a big, you're a big golf guy. Tommy, if you were, you just people got to play, play alongside through. of them. Yeah, if right. you just, yeah. Can yeah. we just pass you on and go to the next sure. hole? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so these guys deal with that, public waters, but also millions of gallons of water that these fish can swim and hide. That The goal doesn't stay the same, basically. Which, which I think really after watching today, at least the anglers that we've been on, it doesn't, it does not seem like a lot of times this time of year, there's a magic spot or two, right? When these guys are offshore, You'll see them rotate around, but you'll they'll get on big schools offshore. To me, when we get down to Championship Saturday, it's going to be one of those guys that has a lot of places to hit. Whether you have to deal with your fish moving, that you fish them out, or you have to deal with the local traffic, I, I, I think, and I'm stating the obvious, I think guys like Clark Wendelit that are, say, look, man, I have a hundred brush piles marked. That's going to pay off before this is all said and done. 
You need this. Somebody rolls up on you and that's, hey, I put that brush pile down there. I hey, put that one down there too. I got 99 more <laughs> yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So do you think that's an issue somebody could run into? So Z then, my question to you is, if there's a guy in the top five going into the final day that is fishing shallow like a Bill Lowen, does that help their chances that the guys who are going to fish a local tournament here know that June it's going to be offshore, they're probably going to win their one-day tournament? To me, Lowen, after watching today, which I think we, we are all very surprised as well as Bill Lowen, that his shallow fish have really not shown back up that well. Um, he's going to need some sort of a miracle for that to, to crank up again. And, and the other thing is that you have to look at, uh, I know the winds are supposed to get a little bit more. We're supposed to have heavier winds on Saturday. But something else that always affects that shallow bite, if you've got 200 boats running all up and down the lake, that trashes it. It just blows out that shallow bite, and he's fishing in a very busy part of the lake. Well, for the 40 who make it to tomorrow, what kind of conditions will they encounter? You talk about winds blowing on You talk about a on TH Saturday. Marine weather I, report? That's exactly what I'm talking about for NTH Marine Weather Watch tomorrow. High of 89. A little cooler tonight, low of 67, partly sunny, wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Not a whole lot different than what we are seeing out there today. So that's what the 40 who will somehow make it to day number three's competition will encounter. And as you say, they'll have a bit of company on the water starting a lot of tomorrow company. as Over well. Over 100 boats on Over Saturday from what, boats. from what we hear. Most of whom will be out there tomorrow practicing, Ooh. getting ready, watching, See alligator. observing. Oh, Reptilian yes. shapeshifter. No way. <laughs> Kyle Welcher, the rookie, still on top, seven ounces ahead of Matt Airy. These are all Bass Track figures. They are unofficial. We're getting closer and closer to the time when they become official. That's way in time. Coming up at 3 o'clock. We've got so much more to come, though. An hour's worth of fishing for you on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series. I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. AFCO, any fish, any water. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly.
You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Final hour of coverage, final hour of fishing. For all of these 86 anglers out there, Bassmaster Elite Series stop number two for the year at Lake Eufaula, the DeWalt's Elite event. The rookie Kyle Welcher on top of the Bassmaster Rookie of the Leader, Rookie of the Year <laughs> leader standings. He is leading the tournament as well. Nine points ahead of Cody Holland. Oregon, Taku Ito, also up there in the standings. Now on top for now, seven, seven ounces ahead of Matt Airy. We'll be with Kyle tomorrow. You can just about book that. Probably Matt as well. It'll be interesting to see exactly the finer points of what they're doing. Here's Kyle Welcher. Pressure's off on him. He doesn't have to worry about making a cut. Well, he's looking said. good. He can expand his his fishing horizons here, his potential areas on Lake Eufaula. He spent some of his time at the St. John's above the bridge, not all the way where Paul Mueller was, but, but north of takeoff, which we don't normally see people go. Um, he had spent a part of his time in that closest creek, which is unique for a rookie to approach that place like he did. Bill Lowen in second, Drew Benton. Still hanging in the top five as well. Been a good tournament for Drew right, Benton. Here we go. Great tournament for Matt Airy. And there's Matt Airy. Just gonna kind of sneak in and take a look at what Matt Airy is doing here. How about that? I would not have thought Matt Airy, one of our offshore specialists, I would not have thought yeah. fishing shallow. And I heard him make the comment with Mercer on stage yesterday. I caught the majority of my fish shallow, but I'll probably end up out deep. Not the case right now. Matt Airy currently in second place unofficially. Almost 19 pounds today. Got an excellent potential to get up over that 20 pound mark. Yeah, I remember him from Gunnersville last year, fishing offshore and getting really good results. I did not think we'd see a double box of Matt Airy shallow and Bill <laughs> Lowen offshore. I did yeah, not, it's not something I didn't think we'd see by the end of the day today. No. Brandon Lester, Seth Fider, and Caleb Summer all just caught uh, four pluses or around there. Wow. And they're 16th, 17th, and 19th now. Kind of lurking there, only 4 11 out of right. the lead. Tournament director Chris Bowes of the Bassmaster BassPro.com opens mentioned to me that Welcher qualified because John Cox double qualified. John Cox really. John Cox did it in the Centrals and the uh, Easterns, and because he was higher in the Centrals than the Easterns, I think they pulled one more from the Easterns, which was Welcher. Wow. So it wasn't like he, he wasn't given a handout by by no means. That you know he was the fifth non-qualified Elite Series pro from the Easterns to make it. Yeah, but he was one of the last yeah. guys in. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Beware the last guy in. We're going to fire back up the opens next week on the Arkansas River. Oh, I'm so sad right now. Who all is in the field for that one that we might recognize the names of Jason Christie Jason Christie <laughs> yeah, I think we can recognize the, that yeah, I know, I've heard of him I think I think you might recognize a one Greg Hackney huh. in that event I'll be darned yeah there's also uh, guys who 
used to fish professionally that have now came over the Opens to qualify for the Elites, the Brian Latimers, the Todd Castledines, Andrew Upshaw, Bradley Hallman, who used to fish the Elites. Oh, yes, for They're Oklahoma. They're all jumping right, back yeah, in. Right. It might be, a, I don't know, I'll have to confirm with him after this event, a Harvey Horn might jump in that event right. because that is where he won a few years ago to uh, punch his ticket to the Elites. Who's your favorite to win that tournament? I have no idea, but I know the water level is going to be very high. <laughs> but there is also a Scott Martin fishing in that as well. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean... It's, it's basically a mini Elite Series field with a lot of locals added to it. I'm going to go with some Hackney or Christy. <laughs> so you're picking that real low-hanging fruit. Don't get wild. Don't get wild. Okay, I, I, just to I know. I'm crazy like that. Crazy. To confirm. <laughs> that is crazy. How high is it? Every, every single lake in Oklahoma and Arkansas is at wow. full pool or higher, and they all flow into the Arkansas River, so the Arkansas River is busting, or at least... It's at the, its brim, but it is flowing. The flow is going to be very, very strong. And the rumor is we are covering that event now live. Yes, the final day of the Opens wow. live. You'll be able to watch it just like you would the final day of an Elite Series event. We'll have, I believe, uh, you know, half dozen cameras out there or so. Um, you'll have to probably listen to me at least a little bit on that one. I and can't wait. I'm gonna, I'll be glued to my set, let no, me tell you, my, my you screen anyway. You have better things to do on a Saturday, Tommy. I know that. No, I don't. We not, keep you trapped in the studio for much longer uh, than you need to be. Might have like a Stetson Blaylock or someone come and drop some insight okay. during that thing as right. well. So star-studded, in other words, and to answer my question. Yes. Both here a in the studio a, and out on the water. A single star in studio, yes. Yeah. Stetson. And you. Yep. That's just a bonus. Winner of that event will punch a ticket to the Bassmaster Classic, correct? Repeat that. Winner yes. of that event will punch a ticket to, to the, the Bassmaster Classic. Have to yes. fish all. If they, if fish, they fish the rest them all. of them, yes. Yeah. We already punched one. Uh, Brian knew one at the Kissimmee right. chain up in January, and then all of our stuff had been postponed since then. So we still have eight Elite Series events, counting this one, and seven opens to go to. So plenty of live coverage from here till November. Yeah, our Toyota Bassmaster Texas Fest going to be in November, which would be very, yeah, hey, you very know, different. That's, that's Interesting. a soul, like that's a soul punch of the ticket as well. Even yeah, though it's the that's last right. Event. That's right. That, the that only winner one. there, yeah. Texas Fest on Lake Fork, yes, in November. Interesting. Talking to Keith Combs and some other folks that fished that lake. I was with Keith, Keith Combs a couple weeks ago. Feels like. No doubt, hands down, that will be a 100-pound tournament. Really? I thought Freaking that was really November, interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. For somebody, I heard the exact opposite from Stetson Blaylock saying he's guided down there as well, and he said fall is tough there. It can it's, be for the stupidest big bags to come out of Lake Fork. Why you got to rain on the parade? Yeah. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I've heard the crappy hey, really somebody, right there. He didn't, gotta, all gotta, feeling he didn't so say good. somebody's yeah. not going to catch 100, but it may be tough on sure, the, Texas a lot of the field. Wildlife. Love to hear that right now, Such. Yeah, hey, look at that man of the year. Look at that familiar doc. He didn't say there's not going to be 30-pound bags. Well, I believe that, but it's going to be, you know, come and follow it with a 14 maybe. Yeah, familiar doc. Yes. Chris Zaldane in a place that, uh, yes, there is some water in there. It's hard to tell when he was here yesterday. Exactly. This is right where one of his, this area we got to see yesterday with a big fish catch in the last hour. Stay on there. Go, stay. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay on there. Oh, it's a big one. No, 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 stay on there. Oh gosh, did it come off? Yeah! And I broke my rod. Woo! High sticking penalty. Got a high sticking penalty right there, baby. Yeah! What? Yes! Yes! 
Well, that's upgrade. how he bookended his day. We Big need, bass to start with and finish up that way. We need another hot mess like that. Oh, we absolutely. Really that, I hot still can't believe that. I might be wrong, and that, that would look like a floating dock right there, and this is like a floating yeah, boathouse. So I caught that nice one yesterday, and I'm, there's a lot of bluegill up shallow here, and it's just a little pocket off a creek, and there's some deep water. I mean, I'm sitting in six feet of water, so that's the key, and I'm seeing all these bluegill cruising. Just got to keep punching away. I mean, if one bites it, it'll be a, you know, four-plus pounder. It's just it's been tough on me today. Those deep spots have been kind of brutal. All right, I just need three bites is all I need. It looked like the dock and that boathouse are closer together than they were yesterday, which and might be a down little rise in the water I mean, from the rain yesterday. We had two good bites late yesterday. Boy, it, it poured here after the weigh-in. Yeah, and that's why I mean, I, it was... It looked like they were, like, it was eight. closed off. Now, that's what I was interested about. Mm, hate to leave this. You know what can happen in that spot right there. We'll have it for you either way. Before we go to break, the Kyle Welcher lead is still intact right now by seven ounces. Matt Airy of North Carolina in second place. Bill Lowen started the day on top. Still in the top three. And there's your cut line. It is now almost to 30 pounds. And the legend Rick Klun sits above that cut line right now. Four-time winner of the Bassmaster Classic. We've got more updates to come when we return on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minn Kota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Just about an hour or a little less for some of the anglers here to fish at our Bassmaster Elite event. But let's look forward to 2021 Fort Worth, Texas, and that Lake Ray Roberts, perennially one of the top 10 regionally in the list of the Bassmaster Magazine's top bass fishing lakes. In that part of the country in Fort Worth, what a great sports town, what a great town, period. Sort of the gateway to the west on the old Chisholm Trail. And they got a brand new facility, Dickey's Arena. State of the art, it was going to be a blast. Bassmaster Classic is the 51st, the second 50 years, we should say, of the Bassmaster Classic gets underway. 
March 19th, 20th, and 21st in Fort Worth, Texas. Very much looking forward to that. Got a lot of business to take care of before then. We've got uh, six more events after this one to find out who's going to be qualified for it. Look who's in second place there. Scott Canterbury with the Uh-oh. four pounders up to 18 and a quarter. Mm-hmm. He's back at it. He's always never gives up. This is throughout the whole day catches him. Boy, if it stays like that, that is as that is as powerful of a top ten that we've seen this year. Oh, no question. Take a look at uh, some info for you here. This is the list of three pounders, see, all, all up and down the lake. Exactly right. And, you know, we actually talked about this in our, our first half of our airing today. The MVP on day one and day two has been Lake Eufaula, and these are three plus pounders here today. And if you look at a body of water, we talked about that generally it gets very centralized, it gets very regionalized wherever this time of year where it's like the lower end, the middle section of the lake or up river. If you look at this, it has been scattered throughout the entire system, which really isn't a, it, it's a a tribute to this lake right now and how healthy it is. And, and, and you can't stress this enough. After that weigh in yesterday, the majority of our field was blown away with the weights that were put on the scales. Like you saw guys lay 17 pounds of bass on the scales and were absolutely crushed Mm -hmm. because they thought that would keep them in the top 20. That is a testament to the strength of this place. Of course, it would have been great back when it was originally scheduled, spawning time, but man, the fact that it's just been terrific here this week is is quite a testament. And it's really been, it's been a late year throughout, you know, the country as far as it's been a late spring. It took a long time for this lake to clear. But one of the things that we see a lot this time of year is when you get into post spawn, and you don't have as many seven, eight, eight and a half pound Mm. fish. You start to really see if if you go off of the years that you and I've covered this, so 20 years now, a lot of our true post spawn tournaments are always very tight events. Yes. They're, yeah. they're, they're, when, when you get in the championship Saturday, it's usually a horse race, and that is obviously what's setting up. That's well, a good one for Chris Aldane. He needed that. <sighs> I needed that one. Just a three-pounder, but I'll take it. Or two and three-quarter. <sighs> I needed that big time. <sighs> oh, sorry about that, Bubba. That's slick. I needed that one, Bubba. That's a big call for me. I mean, I've got a little squirter in here. Oh yeah, I had some, like, I got some rats in here. I gotta get rid of both of these. No, 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 no. Ouch. That was a huge colt for me, man. It's, those are spoonfish, both of those. Little babies, man. I gotta get rid of both of them. There's three. Two. Look at that hoss. Oh Chris Aldane has a limit of five I fish in the that boat. In a while. Yeah. And he can now, with that one he just caught, the bass track put it in the live well. And, of course, he has to get rid of a fish because you can only have a maximum of five. He's going to get rid of his smallest. That looked like about a two-and-a-half-pound pound fish. He's going to gain a pound on that cull right there. They're going to move him back into the top 12. Okay, gain a minimum of a pound on that cull. Maybe, right maybe move into the yes. top 10. We've got plenty of time. Rest of our rules of the game right there. Eight hours of fishing day, five fish limit, of course, every day. 
You're going to cut to 40 after today, cut to 10 after tomorrow. Championship on Saturday and the heaviest four-day total, cumulative total. Four limits, going to win it. And granted, that was not a big one right there, but if, if you... I was just fixing to say, fixing, I was just, I was just about to say, there's some bluegill activity up here, bluegill beds. I mean, a one pound call as that. tight as it's been is huge we right now in team. the last hour. Speaking of a big call, Hunter Shryock didn't have the best day yesterday, just reported in five fish for 20 pounds. Wow. The first 20 pound official, obviously Welcher has 19 something, so Aerie has 18 something probably. Those could be closer to 20, but Hunter Shryock making a big comeback to, it jumped him from 45th to 27th. Mm. So outside the cut and that three pound coal that he had jumped him all the way up into 27th Just place. Just about locked in, yeah, fantastic. Yep, no problem. If one bites, I'll just let it eat it. No, I'll just, go ahead. I, I really doubt that. <laughs> Todd Offen on the ride has been a little bit slower for him today than yesterday. Don't think Such has mentioned this yes, but yet, but Brandon Lester just got another three plus pounders, three and a, or three and three quarters, now up to 17 pounds in 14th place now, and he's caught 25 bass today. Wow! Again, leading the field on most caught, and he's still right around that same 17 to 19 pound mark that he was at yesterday. Todd Auten there, a place where the wind is obviously uh, laid down almost completely going to last year's. Angler of the year, Scott Canterbury. A fantastic season. Started off down here at St. John's River. Actually right here. No, no, oh, that's, Bay. that's the Winya Bay, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I would say that was the biggest bass, one of the biggest bass we got to see that entire tournament on camera. And that's really when a lot of us in studio we knew when he came over from the FLW tour, he was going to be a, a very powerful force. But right here is when you could tell he got traction throughout the season chasing that Angler of the Year title. Giant bass from way up the Cooper River to secure a good high finish there. and Looking for a good high finish here on second event of the year. Our, our last year's Angler of the Year, Scott Canterbury. Since the last time we talked to you, Scott, and we have you in our BOW trailer hitches on the line feature right now, kind of fill us in on what's going on. Well, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just like yesterday, really, except it's not as good. But the action hadn't been as good. But around noon, they started biting again. I caught a lot, caught several, and then the last two I've caught been really good fish. Uh, I did go shallow. I was, you know, I was threatening to. I, I caught my biggest one out, out of a brush pile, out deep, and then I went and ran a few old docks that I used to fish back years ago and caught a four-pounder while ago. So uh, really, hell, I called a, like a 2-1 with a four-pounder, so it, it really boosted me up. Scott, it sounds like there's going to be a... 
it's got, it, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of pressure on the lake tomorrow going into the weekend with a local tournament. Do you feel like you have enough in, in the tank as far as areas to fish, key areas? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm running all over the lake. Uh, I don't know that I, you know, have enough of the, what I've been doing, but I may change it up. Uh, I mean, I, I fished docks here for years and, and I, I know you can't, I didn't think you could win doing that, but you can catch a big bag one day doing it. So, uh, I may change it up. I fished five docks while ago is all I fished and I caught one four pounder and then I just jumped back out to the brush. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll probably change it up a good bit tomorrow, but we'll just have to see if I can get a couple of, you know, you got to have those good bites. And uh, that I've been pretty fortunate the last two days with a few of them. Scott, thanks so much. We can't wait to see what oh, you yeah. bring to the weigh-in. Oh, yeah. Last year's Angler of the Year, Scott he'll bring it. Oh, he will bring it. The St. John's River, which I wanted to say we were looking at there when we were actually looking at Winya Bay, was where he got it started. Kind of a slow start there, and then he turned it around and never looked back. Had one little hiccup at Lake Fork, but you can see those incredible finishes, especially as we went up north into smallmouth country. Great versatility. Boy, the all-around angler, and that's what that Angler of the Year award is all about. I kind of feel like Scott Canterbury will also be there at the end of this event. Oh, you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know. Of, kind of low-hanging fruit again. Yeah, well, exactly. low-hanging fruit, right. yeah. That's it's a good, good bet. We'll, we'll he call and his it. buddy Ari get together. They seem to do well. <laughs> yes. Canterbury just seven ounces behind our leader, Kyle Welcher, right now. About uh, 40 minutes of fishing left, and we'll have it for you when we come back. The DeWald Passmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minkota. Breaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassmo, first US Coast Guard approved Bassmo, first B-Hole pad design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassmo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Getting closer and closer to completing our full six hours of top bass fishing, competitive bass fishing for you here, the Bassmaster Elite Series. Stop number two of the season, the DeWalt Elite. We're in legendary Lake Eufaula. We've got the same offer for you tomorrow. We will pick it up at 8 a.m. Eastern time. 
three hours of morning coverage, step back for an hour, and then three hours from noon until 3 Eastern time, taking you just about up to weigh-in time. Crucial weigh-in tomorrow, of course, we establish the 10 who will fish for the championship. The big blue trophy that means so much to an angler. That championship on Saturday. Big weigh-in today. Only 40 will make it through today to have a shot at that top 10. So when things will be different, things will be different as far as the uh, the company that these anglers have on the on the lake. I, I, oh, I see. I see. We got the screen of knowledge exactly. cranked up here. I, 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 I was so aware of that. Ronnie Moore with the uh, with the knowledge for us, and it's fantasy related. I can tell that. Well, because the the day is winding down, just an hour or so left of fishing for these guys, and like you said, 40 will advance. That's crucial for them getting a paycheck for one, but also advancing to the championship round on Saturday. But it's really crucial for Rappel at Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. If you want to succeed week in and week out and win the prizes, you have to have all of your guys make that cut. And I wanted to touch on what we talked about yesterday, kind of the chalk squad, I called them. The guys, the most popular picks in each bucket. If your friends say, this is my team well they didn't do a bunch of research they just picked the best guy in each bucket what's it's working out today and I wanted to go through how these guys are doing Stetson Blaylock he's sitting down there doesn't have a marshal but he's been giving us occasional updates he's right there in the mid 40s on that cut line a pound or two from being able to make day three in the top 40 Brandon Lester we just spoke of him he's in the top 15 doing well today catching by far the most number of fish out of anyone in the field Gerald Swindle, we mentioned him earlier, he had jumped up, had the biggest bag of the day for a good portion of the morning. He is now around that 20th place mark. Seth Fighter and Chris Zaldane, those guys are also in the top 15, uh, top 20-ish uh, fighter is. And we just saw Zaldane's Cole will definitely put him uh, in the top seven, top eight of this event. So, hey, the Chalk Squad's working out great for everyone who's picked him for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Do you stay away from the Chalk Squad? I don't like to pick the guys that are really high percentage. Uh, because for one, what fun is that to go with the whole pack that picked them? But for some of these guys, I did pick. Uh, I picked some high percentages, just not the highest. All right, great job. Fun when they win. Yeah. Yeah. Fun when they win. But with, it's also fun to pick a long shot and have it work out. With 47% picking Bigger Zaldane, payoff. half the half the people are excited he's doing well this week. All right, back to Kyle Monte, chugging that frog through there. Great camera work by. One gear Russ right there. Caught some of the best images of the season last year. Oh, we sure did. What did you call Russ? One gear Russ. Why are you calling that? Uh, social media. That's his know. that's Handle. his Instagram. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. All right. Oh. That's why. see that enough. Mm -mm. No. No, sir. Here it is. <laughs> oh, that is so great. About three good frogfish for Kyle Monty this afternoon. I'm not going to say it's the power pole replay of the day, but I'm not going to say it's not. Is that might. right there? That's Sports Center material. <laughs> <laughs> and even if we say it is, we might get outvoted in the truck. They're exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Really, really good camera work. It's what I was wondering about yesterday, Z. Those guys who've lived offshore might survive by catching one up shallow, and but it, as they, you know. Don't lose traction, gain their footing on that. And you heard Canterbury say it. He's, that he's bounced yeah. in it. And you can almost. I, look, let's see it one more time. You can see the grass move to the left. About, well, you can oh, see him laid out completely seconds, right yeah. under that thing right before he. That is great. Before um, he doubled up on him. It's even better right when he sets a hook. Um, can Ono almost tell in Canterbury's tone? He's saving a little stuff. Said he went up on a string of docks, fished five, caught one, left.
a little bit of an upgrade. I watched that one move the grass behind it before you ate it. That was cool. Where's your mama? You want some hand-eye coordination, how quickly it happens for a blow up. Point, point two I'm seconds. I just lock this thing in my hand, dude. You can still dude. see that. Uh, two, three quarters. I think that's my smallest. Give him a quarter ounce coal. Get rid of a two and a half. Or a quarter pound. Oh, I wish I knew where there was some more of this stuff at. I came over here to fish that brush pot. I'm just happy to see it. channel swing sides grass it's got to have grass a flat with the drop off so the channel s turns through here like this and i'm gonna want to fish the banks that are closest to that swing spend a half an hour doing this and we'll Go back out to our main spot. We'll give it 20 minutes. Let's go. Frog swim jig flipping. You can see where the bank drops off and where it's a little bit deeper out here if it comes up closer. It's not in the grass, but it's deeper, a little bit deeper water close to it. There's, it's been a bite almost every time. Z, Tommy, this is how close the standings Wind are. seems to help. Second and third are tied and fourth through seventh are all by one ounce per spot. So Wow. Four ounces for four spots, and then second and third are tied. That is, it's phenomenal. Monty, Zaldane, both talking about they're looking for the same thing, the grass that's closest to the channel swing, the deeper water access. It is insane, the year class Ooh, of three to four pounders that live in this lake. If you look at it, what we've watched, what we've got to see on the weigh-in stage, that three to four pound class, mm -hmm. uh, obviously the average size was 3.5 pounds mm -hmm. yesterday per bass. Uh, but that's exceptional. Which do you think the, you follow went through a down spurt, you know, like the, I don't know what, what the reasoning was. I don't know if it was the virus or whatever, but it had that time for four or five years that it wasn't at its best and it came back bigger than ever the last five or six years. Is that how long it takes to get a four pounder? A three, you know, a three to three and a half to four pounder is five, you know, five years or, or that what is, is way that? past my, I can't comprehend that. If you walked over the screen of knowledge, I bet I you would. Really, it's it's got to clear out a little uh, bit in order to get a good spawn too. I'm not so yeah, down yeah, that yeah, road, yeah. Jack. And yet another lead change. Scott Canterbury called with a four pounder. He's Ooh, up to 19.0 on his bass track. He's uh, four ounces short of 40 pounds even. Still has a two and a half to get rid of as well. Yeah, five, a four and a half pounder, four pounder, mm. three pounder, and a two and a half.
Seth Fighter with a five pounder. Wow. The longest we have not happen. been on Clark Wendelit here in the last. Oh, yeah. It's been almost like 45 minutes. Hope he's okay. Caught so many bass this morning. Canterbury is in that first flight, has to be back at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, so he only has 25 minutes left. Come out of there. There he came. Came out of there, good grief. Flopped her in here. Yes, sir. That's a big call Good right now, man. There. Feisty one there for Wow. Clark Winlet. Had him hung in the brush pile and he comes out. Living right. Yeah, living, living right, right all day long. Sticking to his guns all day long as well. The big, the big worm, just a few rods on the deck. Man, that's, yeah. a, that's a guy who's committed. You've got to keep your eyes on a guy who's committed like Clark Winlet. Hanging in there in the top 10. Scott Canterbury, though, your new leader. Last year's Angler of the Year Would you finds his way to the top. At those weights that we have going into day three, uh, it's unbelievable. how tight they are. Oh my gosh, they're less than a fish. Just a small fish separating all of these anglers right here. Man, it's getting good and we're getting close to the end as well. We'll be right back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minn Kota. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Well, tonight on ESPN, top-ranked featherweight contender Jesse Magdaleno taking on Yennefel Vicente, who is 11-1 with 11 knockouts in his last 12 fights. 
That's our main event bout. Coverage of the prelims beginning at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, the ESPN app. ESPN Deportes. Looking forward to that. I know you are. I'm starting to waver. I know. I'm oh, starting what? to waver. No, I, wait a minute. I, well, no. When I look at Vicente, I, I, I do, I, I'm scared of him. I really am. No, no, no. You can't. I'm you starting can't. to waver. Stop. You I am completely lying. Magdaleno's my guy. Yeah, and he's been my yeah, guy. Don't start faltering. All event. I thought you were going to start factoring your bets there on us. And we Tell don't you want what we'll that. do right now, Tommy Sanders. I want right. to slide back out on the water. Chris Zaldane with a big fish this morning. Made a call about a half hour ago. Chris Zaldane live. Another call. Not huge, but a call. <sighs> yes. I'll take these two pound, two and a half, two and a quarters all day with the seven, you know, with a six pounder. I almost said seven pounder. I ruined the surprise. <laughs> it's a good call. <sighs> Get rid of that other rat. Yes, great call. The spot. You know, they're just not biting, like, you know. That's a, you got to like work to get them to bite. So you're having to get it more deeper in the brush. And all these trees are different. So if I hear you go, uh huh, I know we're just like chit chatting. Are we or no? <laughs> For the most part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. Unbelievable. Nice Good one ones. Other. Nice one. That's awesome. God, this is fun. Right. He's at a really good stringer right now. Yeah. Clark make the comment he's Anybody getting it is, his bait you catch one in this pile and it's going to be a good one. Way deeper in those brush piles now that the sun's got up. Make sure that it's positioned them. That's not an emergency. Yeah. Blowing up. Yeah. I think that is. I think I'm going to try to find more of this grass. I don't I don't want to run all the way back down there where I started. fish tomorrow I'll go there tomorrow and try to find some more of this stuff this seems to be got quite a few bites doing it in a little bit of time I've done it there's something to it water's coming up still a little bit and then the I guess the cool air pushed a few up shallow or they've been shallow and I didn't know about it I don't know I just feel like I can, this is my best chance to get a bite. I need a five or six pounder. I'll be right back in this thing. But I could run all over the lake looking for it and not find anything, you know. But we'll find out. That's part of the adventure. Oh, he knew they were biting up shallow. With who his roommate is, they talk about their practices and stuff. He he knew. A little, little taste of that frog. Break. Can't even break it.
Clark's put on a show today. Oh, he has. I mean, so many good keepers. Walked us through exactly how he's catching them, really fishing the law of average. We just caught two four-pounders back-to-back and missed another one right after that. Now, unfortunately, I'm hung in the brush pile. And I don't know if I can get it. I cannot. Get up here, stir it up a little bit, turn around and make another cast. thing about that is is that that line right there is not breaking I'm out here I'm throwing 25 pound fluoro just can't I'm fourth on place yesterday now he's first I hmm. oh, got it cool How's it been? You know, our day's been good. We've caught a lot of fish. I thought to myself, if I can catch a lot, you know, a lot of bass, eventually, you know, I'll get those good ones. And I have. I, I lost a boot. You know, I've, I've had some misfortune, lost a few, but that's part of it. Got about an hour to go, not quite, maybe 145. I weigh in at 240 today. Clark, well, like you said, man, what a show he's put on Dude, today. Guy is him. an absolute pro. If you really listen to him, watch him fish, we've known him for decades, decades in the fishing world. Two giant calls. If you really look at the day that Clark Wendelin has fished, he's never, ever deviated from his Not game plan. Playing. Every single angler we've been on has bounced all over with, for survival, he has stuck to a game plan. If you look at, really, in the last hour, two big shots across the bow. One of the first things you locked on to when you saw him this morning is look how few rods he has on his deck. This guy's already made up his mind. The he's first doing thing it. I wrote last night after getting off the phone, very, very dangerous, what he was just talking about. Got to figure Clark's going to be there till the bitter end. No doubt. He'll make it to tomorrow. Much doubt mm. about that. And look at that. <laughs> Gosh, that's off. like, that is two birdies on 17 and oh, 18 right Oh, that is right absolutely back-to-back -back with maybe an eagle to start the day off. Scott Canterbury now. Hangs in second place in Kyle Welcher, Cobb, Airy, Lowen, Benton, Monty, Zaldane, and Pipkins in the top ten. Mm. Probably some more changes on the way. We'll be right back. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Sign up to compete in the inaugural Hook Bassmaster BASS Nation Kayak Series, powered by Tourney X, presented by Abu Garcia in 2020. The trail features five regular season events, with a championship to be held in conjunction with the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. The first tournament will be at Logan Martin Lake in Hell City, Alabama on March 5th, in conjunction with the 50th Bassmaster Classic. To find out more details and to register, visit Bassmaster.com slash kayak. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. 
Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Sabre FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. If you want to know how the best anglers always seem to find fish, stay on fish, and be in the right place at the right time, don't ask them. Just look at the name on the side of their boat. The one that's built 10 million motors, shallow water anchors, and more. No angler's going to tell you their secrets, but they don't have to, because you already know. Minn Kota, Fish for more. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. Waiting moments of fishing here on Lake Eufaula is try to identify the 40 who will fish tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, only 10. We'll make it to championship Saturday, busy sports day on ESPN2, but hey, right there at noon, we're going to pick up with you. The last three hours of fishing on Saturday, championship Saturday here on ESPN2. It's going to be a big one, that is for sure. Can we talk about the Mercury move of the day for just a second? Uh, I, yeah, I think we should we probably. Number one, we have not yet, and it's fair to say it, Kind of all over the map, but I think our Mercury move of the day is going to be somebody we were not really looking at coming into day number two, and it's Kyle Welcher. Yeah. And really, if you look at his fish, fish catches throughout day number two, as we head down towards the dam outside of town of Lake Eufaula right there, perfection, fishing shallow, moving out deeper, as we heard Davey Height say, one of the hardest things in bass fishing, committing to doing both and accurately doing both. Fishing shallow, fishing deep. Kyle Welcher is for sure today our Mercury move of the day as of right now. 15th place to the top of the leaderboard for a while there. That is a meaningful, a big move. You know, important day number two, big move and day for all of our 86 anglers out there. 20 pounds and three ounces. He was the, uh, the 15th the bottom of that list of who got 20 pounds on the first day. Kyle Welcher obviously knows what's going on. You know what's so, I, we talk about this all the time, every tournament that, that we cover, but if you don't follow us here on the Bassmaster Elite Series, it is uncanny how when a lake turns on, they start biting all over. Like we never knew this before covering live fishing tournaments. No, no, no. You know, you think, hey, here's a fish catch here, here, and here's a fish catch there. But a lot of these reservoirs, especially this time of year, when they turn on, it's like they turn on all over the lake. And when they, and the other side, we know this, boy, when they turn off, they turn off yeah. on all 85 miles of the lake. <laughs> Someday science will figure yeah, that out. But what's, what's in interesting is you always say to yourself as a fisherman, doesn't matter if you're on a 400 acre lake or an 85 mile long lake, you say to yourself, oh, they're, they're biting somewhere. What we've learned is when they're biting, you're right. Generally, they're biting somewhere all over. But, but we've also learned with Bass Track and, and with our live cameras, when you say to yourself, ah, they're not biting here, they're biting somewhere, there are times 
No, they're not. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. No, not. absolutely. I remember vividly at Lake Texoma in 2016, Gerald Swindle had Big Bass of the event, uh, I guess via, or he shared the Big Bass of the event. Two identical six plus pounders were caught within two minutes of each other on the same day. You know, that was the, that was the window of time. And I always imagine how many guys were driving on the lake to the next spot. And if they would have stayed a little longer, they could have caught their biggest fish of the day because of the moon or the sun's positioning, the moon's positioning, whatever it is. But the timing of it, and we saw it today. The couple shallow guys that rose into the top 10 did so all in the same hour. Sounds like an old wives tale, but it's true. And it's some kind of alchemy that you're right. There's no way we could have known until we started doing live. I mean, the only way people could have thought about it is just informally comparing right. notes among anglers at the end of the day. Which you never anecdotal. get any truth in that. Right, right. So. That's, and you'd never, your yeah. chances of getting truth there. You're writing down you know, stuff. It's, it's, been a, it's been a, an epic day here on, on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And generally this time of day, we start to close out. We start to promo tomorrow's coverage, stuff like sure. that. All that shenanigans going into day number three. But I'm going to tell you something, Tommy Sanders. It's all over the board for, with the, the, the big boxing match tonight, who you're rooting for. <laughs> it's all over the board on what the power pole replay of the day is. Everybody likes top water bites. Mm. Everybody likes seven pounders in the first half hour of the morning. True and true. This is the longest promo for a Why, why can't it be both? Why can't it be both? Like it be both? <laughs> right. is, why don't we right. just make it both? You know, it could be. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. It's not. Oh. Hey, Kyle Monty, you and your cameraman, Russ, you are the powerful replay of the day. Watch this bite. There he's under. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. It's fun in real speed. It's not a word, but it's fun nerve. It's fun nerve in slow motion. <laughs> hey, Kyle Monty, you are the power pole. It was this a very was a disjointed tale. again. It was a, it was a saga. It was, it was a saga. It was, it was a novel Wait of a power to, pole replay. Wait for you to say most is fun. It was an encyclopedia. The funner, most power pole replay of the day, of the week, uh, of the year. Goof. Kyle Good Monty, day. you're the power pole replay of the day. Good stuff right there. If you want to watch that over and over and over again, even after live is done, I just put it up on the Bassmaster social media. You can watch that on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. Just kidding. Anglers with flights that went out a little later are going to have a little more fishing here. The early anglers are headed in. Some of them got to check in right on the dot at 3 o'clock. Yeah, we have an official there, BASS official at the Lake Point Marina, and right. they have to check in with them. Yep. If they miss their time, they are penalized. You, you, you pay the price for missing your time. You don't want to lose track of time of day. One pound per minute. You'll get laughed at. You will. <laughs> we'll get laughed at. Lose money. Especially when you're on a on a waterway that is one half of it is in Eastern time, one half of it oh, is yeah. in Central ah! time. That makes things even crazier. <laughs> Confusion. Yep, yeah, yeah. That mistake's been made. And will be made again. I just don't want to see this top water stop. I don't want to see this frog action quit. Oh, it's been great fishing today. Oh, great God. fishing. Good, good stuff. Go Even better than yesterday, I think. Absolutely. And that's how it yeah. started. Absolutely the way yeah. to start. And it just kept going Look at and this. going and going. I've never seen anything like that before. We had just action all day long. Tomorrow, it's all day long. And we get started at 8 a.m. again, Eastern time for the three hour morning session. Step back for an hour. Back again at noon for three hours at the end of that. Weigh in to see who the final 10 are who will compete on championship day. Mm.
got to take a special interest in the 40 who make yeah. it through today. That way in action is coming up next. You can check it out on Bassmaster.com. Back right up at 3 o'clock, which means it's time for us to step out. Yeah, we baby. will see you tomorrow right here on Bassmaster Live, Tommy.